that it was the will of, of, of the Father, of Yahweh, of God. Now you're twisting words. And Hey guys, so we're at a, um, a water dispensary and um, we just came across some brothers in Christ and I'm with a seasoned elder pastor, and uh, isn't Pastor John, right? Yeah. Uh, my name is Pastor Richard. I'm at the Remnant Revival Outreach Center, like I mentioned, about 10 minutes away, non-denominational church. Um, so you're a seasoned pastor, you're an elder. So quick question, John, um, you're, you're a veteran? Yes. I am too. I was in the, the Navy for seven years. Oh. Uh, I was an air traffic controller. What did you do in the Army? I was a military policeman, plus I was also a personal service NCO. Okay, so you were NCO and uh, non-commissioned officer, and you were MP. Okay, um, so a few questions. Um, so what denomination are you again? Uh, I am a Seventh-day Adventist. Okay, and um, I know there's different denominations, and all one body, you know, one head, crashes the head. So as, as far as Seventh-day Adventist theology, what, what, is, what does Seventh-day mean? Uh, just as the name says, uh, we follow the biblical teaching of creation that on Saturday God rested from all his work and so we follow the seventh day and seventh day is the seventh day of the week which is Saturday and Adventist means the soon advent of Christ's return. Okay, cool man. And um I know that uh that you know the Jewish calendar compared to now, wasn't the Gregorian calendar altered by uh, Julius Caesar? No. Uh, the calendar that we use today, which shows, you know, Sunday through Saturday, has been in place for about thirty five hundred years. And so what you see on those seven days is exactly pretty much how it was when God created created the world at the beginning and then when we look at the Sabbath being Saturday the Jewish nation has followed the seventh day Sabbath for over 5,000 years mm -hmm. and so it hadn't been lost in you know track of uh, a lot of your Sunday keeping churches do it in honor of Christ's resurrection Okay. I think it's interesting. I studied a little bit on it, and um, I saw that Julius Caesar did alter the calendar, added two months. That's where we get July, Julius, right. August, Augustus, August. So, I mean, according to what I, my studies, it has been altered, and the days have been shifted, but I guess that's, a, that's something I have to dig deeper on. As far as the Sabbath, under the law, the Levitical law, the teachings of the Sabbath and the Torah, there wasn't, were there specific things that, customs that they had to do on the Sabbath day? Other than what the Bible talks about when you go into Exodus 20 and it says that you're not to do any work like labor such as if you have a job to cutting grass or whatever the case may be, that day is set aside specifically to honor God and worship Him for what he's done for us and what Jesus has done for us on you know when he died on the cross when you look at that at the sabbath and we follow the biblical teaching of sundown friday night to sundown saturday night as as the sabbath day and god rested that day now you can say rest well did go home and take a nap all day long no that's not what the purpose God had made. There were specific criteria for the yes. Sabbath. Like they had yes. to, they had to actually pray certain prayers. They had to eat certain foods. Well, they ate. according to the Word, the Bible. Yeah, the Bible, and and you know we look at food today. Uh, when you go back, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, plus when they left the garden, they were pretty much vegetarian, vegan style food. Didn't uh, God tell Peter that what I make clean is clean when that blanket came down but when he went to Cornelius's house and didn't that open up the door to where we could anything God makes clean is clean or? Not according to the way we look at it because what God had done was when Je during Jesus's ministry he was rejected by the Jewish people Jewish nation by the Pharisees yes pretty much everybody in all the religious yeah. leaders yes who were following the law yeah and they followed the law and they were very strict and putting yokes on people yeah you know they added customs and stuff but super traditional and super religious and, and pretty much would look, look down on him and say you can't do these things on the sabbath day why are you healing people and, and he said he, and he said do you not know that i am the sabbath yes that's that is correct and healing is taking suffering away from somebody do you believe that we can lay hands on the sick right now if someone if someone's in a wheelchair and they can get up and, and be healed by the power of the holy spirit yes 
Have you ever seen it in a Seventh-day Adventist church? Uh, I've heard of it, but I've not seen it. Do you believe that we have the ability to cast out demons? Yes, we do. Have you ever seen it in a Seventh-day Adventist church? Uh, no. Have you ever seen it in person at all yourself? No, I haven't. And I think a lot of that goes back to what the Bible says. If you have a faith of a mustard seed, you could move mountains. Amen. And so, you know, that is such a tiny thing. And so when we look at faith, a lot of times we doubt ourselves. And Because it's, it's, it's faith. It, it, and like faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Why, why do you think it doesn't say reading? And it says hearing, the rhema word, the spoken word. Because a lot of times when you hear something, it makes a bigger impression. Or re revelation. Yeah. Because you could read the Bible, but yeah. if you don't have the revelation by the Holy Spirit. Well, and the other side of it is you could read fast and not comprehend it all. And so when you're listening, you're paying more attention. Your mind is more focused on what's coming into it. And that's how the Holy Spirit touches us and opens us up. Hearing by, by hearing, by taking our time, yes. meditating on the word. Yes. Man, that's interesting. So I came to Christ and um, I wasn't raised in the church and uh, I was seeking God. I was in the military, like I said. I went around the world, made a bunch of money, had all these women, alcohol, uh, drugs, just trying to seek truth. And I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ. And he actually like, demons started coming out of me. I got healed from a disease the doctors couldn't heal in the military instantaneously. And now I see the power of the Holy Spirit moving my life. We just had a guy come to the church last, we actually have our services on Saturday too. We had a guy come to our church and he got healed. And right at the altar, he couldn't, he couldn't jump and he started jumping. I seen people uh, delivered from demons regularly. And I believe like God has poured out his spirit upon all flesh, but just like we have to get out of religion we have to get out of legalism. Yeah, because religion is, 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 is everyone's religious if they continuously practice something, right? There's pure and undefiled religion, which is given to the widows and orphans, according to the book of James. But we have to get out of legalism and religiosity. And, and I th But at the same time, uh, you have to pay attention. And what happens most of the time in a lot of different churches is they say, well, at the cross, the Old Testament was done. Uh, and we no. don't pay attention to the Old Testament. He, he, he didn't come to abolish the law. No. He came to fulfill, fulfill it. So now everything is in Christ. Yeah. That's why he says, I am the Sabbath. He says, if, if you need rest, come to me. He is rest. So what if, what if every day is a Sabbath day because we have our rest is in Christ now? Because under the law, they had all these works. They didn't have rest. Well, but if you want to say every day is a rest day, you can say every day we live in Christ is a rest day. But he gave us six days to do our labors. And that seventh day was the day of rest. That's a day of worship that we should pay attention to. Do you think if you don't, um, if you don't, you know, worship God on Saturday, uh, I guess, I mean, according to the law, there was very specific things you had to do. So I guess if you don't rest on Saturday, do you think you, you can go, to, you're, you're, you're risking going to hell? No, because we are told that there are faithful in every church and when you look at somebody's belief, how much light has been given to them through the Holy Spirit? And so for me to say here, well, because you go to church on Sunday, you're lost. No, because if you're living up to the amount of light that you've been giving, that God has given you and the Holy Spirit has reached down and touched you with, then there is that good chance that you will be saved too. I can't stand right here and say, I'm saved. You don't know if you're saved? I know right now I am. How, 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 but, how, how are you saved? But a week from now, maybe I'll change. Maybe I'll just chuck religion off and go off and start drinking and whatever. How are you saved? Through Christ that, and through His grace. By, by faith. Yeah. And wow. faith, yes. It is. It's only faith. It's a combination. It's by grace, which is unmerited favor through faith. So it's it's putting our faith in Christ. And, and works. We're not saved by works. We're not saved by works. The, bi the Bible works says is part of the thing. And because if you believe, why are you standing here? Now? Of course, so the Bible says we're saved by grace through faith, not sure. by works, lest no, any man works, boast. Works will not take you to heaven. So basically, our works don't save us. But if you don't. If you don't, if you're not, if your works, which is your fruit, don't show that you are a follower of Christ, then obviously you never had faith to begin with. That's, that's exactly right. You know. And do you believe that, that being born again is, is a real thing? Yes. How, how are you born again? Because Nicodemus was a Pharisee and he went to Christ in the night so that uh, people didn't see. Him. And when he met Jesus and they talked, Jesus said, you must be born again. again. And Nicodemus was lost. How can I be go back to my mother's womb now? And, you know, he missed the point, but Jesus drove her home. He says, you must be baptized by water. 
And this is the, this is death and coming out, living in Christ. So you must be born again by water and spirit. Yes. Like, like, a, like a mother's womb and um, of the spirit. So do you think being baptized in the Holy Spirit is a real thing? Like, you, you know, on the day of Pentecost, and I'm not a Pentecostal, um, I, I have this question for you, Pastor. When, he, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, doesn't it say when he saw his disciples, he breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit? Yeah. And then he told them still, after 40 days of being on the earth, wait to be endued with power. And they were. So and what's the difference? never one of us can have that same power. But, but what's the difference between receiving the Holy Spirit and then being endued with power? Well, because when you look at Pentecost and what happened, if I were to stand here and as we're talking now, but I was talking in another language, let's say Spanish, for instance. So you believe? you're English. Mm -hmm you would have understood everything that I was saying. It's not something that, it's a foreign language that's something that nobody's ever heard of. Because they, it's the Bible says they all understood the disciples in, in, their own language. in their own language. So how does 120 people scream, like just in cloven tongues of fire, right? That's what it says. They, yeah. How, how can they all, all these people on Pentecost on a, day, on a day where everyone came back to see their family, how can they understand in their, in their own language? The power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus. The, the interpretation of tongues. Yep. That's a gift. So, so, so do you believe that on that day, the gift of the interpretation of tongues was poured out in the atmosphere of the non-believers, so they had the grace to be able to hear these disciples, these, these apostles, speaking in a, in a, in a babble. Like they a, were speaking in their language. But, but, how, but how could, think about it, 120 people here right now, and we're all just speaking to the crowd in different languages. There's no way. It'd be too much chaos. But okay. what if, but what if they were speaking? Because think about this. If right now, if I come to you, Pastor, and I say, and I speak in Mandarin, you don't know Mandarin. You would, you would say, that sounds dumb. Like, if I'm, like, right? Yeah. You'd, be, you'd be like, what is that? Cause, but because what? the Holy Spirit, I would have understood every word. Exactly. So language is when your, our organs are vibrating, right? And creating a frequency, a sound. Yeah. So think about it. So... You know, Pentecostals and other people in the, in the church, they, they speak in a, in a tongue, right? They say tongues, like they, and they speak in like a, a babble. And it sounds weird because you don't understand the language. It's kind of like Mandarin. But what if it was? What if it actually, because Paul said, what if, because Paul said, he said, I, I pray and I sing in unintelligible words. Did you know that? Yes. So what did he mean by unintelligible words? And it could have been a language that he knew that nobody else knew. You know, take a take a step back in time. Let's go back to the Tower of Babel. Everyone spoke the same language. One language. But then God came down and he made all the different languages. But Paul said he spoke in a language he didn't even understand. And, he, and that may be just like what you said. You wanted he, to speak in Mandarin where I didn't understand it. And he but said yet, he God said, gave you the power to do that. He said in the church, he's, he, would, he didn't want to speak in tongues because it would sound like a baboon because nobody understands. He said, let there be an interpreter. So what was he talking about? An unintelligible language, a baboon, like, because think of how a baboon sounds. It sounds yeah, dumb. But, no, I don't, I don't, that's, that's disorganization. And God is not a disorganized God. But he said, that, but he, he brought order to the church. And he, he brought order. But so, he what, also, so what was he saying about having an interpreter when you prophesy? Make sure there's two or three of you and there's judges. Yeah, so he was that way everybody understands. Because they were people. they were out of order. Yeah, but everybody understands. So if some if they were speaking in tongues like Pentecostals believe, right? Do you think it's a possibility that that might be real? I don't know. You Amen. know, it could be. God is all powerful. There are so many things that we have no idea what He can do. That I believe mysteries. And then Paul also said, "Do not judge a man off of any meat he eats or doesn't eat." Because they were eating meat. That is true. And, and when we go back to the way the original diet was, meat was not part of it. But they it did not come into play until after the flood when Noah left the ark. That I agree. But, but why did Paul say, don't judge a man off of any meat he eats? Well, we're not judging anybody, period. But so you could eat meat. Matter. So we can actually eat meat. No, because you have, yeah, you could eat meat. Do you eat certain, meat? Yes. Okay. Certain meats. Uh, so so it's, there's, there's specifics, but then... Go back to uh, Leviticus but 11. Then, but then the New Testament, it says anything that you, you eat, you, you give thanksgiving and... We go back to the same thing when, when people say the Old Testament was done away with the cross. It's not. What about yeah. Samson? Huh? What about Samson? What about it? In the Old Testament, uh, you know, it was it was forbidden to to, to marry or, or, or fornicate with a Philistine. But in the Bible, it says that that, that he, he likened on to a Philistine woman. And his mother and father told him, stop, what are you doing? That's going against the law. And the Bible says they did not know that it was the will of, of, of the Father, of Yahweh, of God. Now you're twisting words. And so... What do you mean? Uh, we in the church, in the Adventist church... 
Uh, we try to encourage our young people when they marry to stay within the church. Oh, 100%. Uh, the Bible, the, the, the Bible uh, yeah, do not be unequally yoked. Yeah, you're unequally yoked. And Samson was driven by desire, you know. But why did it say it was the Father's will? It was the because will of God. Certain things have to take place in the world. In order for God's for will. To be done. Well, well, he can use a heathen just as much as he can use a righteous Amen. Person. But we still go, we still follow, don't, don't, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. I teach that too. I teach the congregation, the young, the youth, hey, don't go out there sleeping with, you know, stay, stay celibate, wait till it's a woman of God, mature in the faith. Yeah, we always say that. So, man, I, I appreciate this interview. Is there anywhere I, I can say a prayer for you right now? Oh, sure. We can always pray. Do you have any pain on your body right now? Oh, Back pain? I'm, I'm 70 years old. Who wouldn't have it pain? What do you, where do you have pain? Oh, it's just everywhere. Where, right now, where would you say the pain is? I say in the legs. Where in the legs? The knees? All the legs. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm just being honest. I, 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 I've, seen, I've seen a million times people get healed. So I, can you be honest with me if I pray? Are you willing to receive it? If I pray for you to receive that you're going to get healed? That would be a contradiction of what I believe. Okay. So you don't believe in divine healing? I do believe. So then why don't you believe you can get now, healed right now? What you're missing was that would be a contradiction that I don't believe in, in true healing from Christ. Okay. John, God bless you, man of God. Hey, you too. Thank you. Seriously for this interview. Oh, you yeah. Because you you, you're a seasoned man of God. I look up to guys like this because you've been here for a while. And that means God God has entrusted you. I was baptized in the church when I was in the army too. Wow. And so I was on my way to Vietnam when I got pulled out of my unit singly by myself, sent to Germany, and met my first wife there and was baptized in the Adventist church at the Nuremberg Seventh-day Adventist Church. Oh, in Germany. Wow, wow, wow. I've been there too. Frank Frankfurt, Berlin, um, Rammstein. Yeah. Been to Frankfurt, Ramstein. I've been not to Berlin. I, I want to go. Spent four years there. Really? Yeah. I want to go back there for the gospel. Well, I went back. Um, I was there from '71 to '75. For the years, I wanted to go back, and finally, financially, I was at a position, and so my current wife and I went back in 2018. Wow. We took a cruise, 15-day cruise across to Barcelona, Spain. My older brother was stationed there in uh, Darmstadt. He went, his wife, my two older sisters, and so we traveled Europe for two weeks. Wow. I was disappointed. <laughs> Most of the American bases are gone over there now yes. where I was there. I heard, I heard that they're all gone. It's all good. John, thank you. And we'll be back to get some more water.